It's -a me, Mr. V. I talk about tracks a lot on this channel, whether it be actual tracks the Formula One uses now, proposed new ones, or even roasting random countries on their inability to draw a good layout. Get it together, Great Britain, what is this? But under all of those videos, there is one comment that I get more than any other. What Mario Kart tracks would make the best F1 Which tracks? Mario Kart tracks would make the best F1 Mario Kart, Kart tracks? Mario Kart tracks something, something, Mario Kart something. Okay, Garage Boy, now make the Mario Kart tracks as F1 tracks video. And look, okay, I get it. You want to know which Mario Kart track would be the best in Formula 1. And I know that's literally the title of my other videos when we look at countries or logos, but those are things that aren't tracks. I don't know if you've noticed, but Mario Kart tracks are already tracks. So then it becomes a question of personal taste. What kind of racing do you like? Do you like dedicated facilities or technical corner complexes? Well, then Mario Circuit might be your answer. Do you like high-speed street circuits? Crown City. Or do you actually just like oval racing and only know how to turn left? Well then, Cooper Trooper Beach might be for you. But for me, which track would be best is not the question that keeps me up at night. I know my answer, it's Moo Moo Meadows because it's easy to learn, hard to master and also cows. No. The question that keeps me up at night is not which track would be best or most fun in Formula 1, but rather which tracks are legal to use in Formula 1, according to the 2025 FIA International Sporting Code Appendix O Procedures for the Recognition of Motor Racing Circuits. It's a thrilling read. Look, motor racing is dangerous because let's say you're organizing an event and one of your competitors, a cow riding a motorcycle, has a head-on collision with a heavy goods vehicle. This is bad. This kills the cow. And so the FIA has set forth a number of regulations which its tracks must follow to ensure that they're safe and also that there's no trucks driving around and that the cows wear helmets. So before we can even get down to the points of which Mario Kart tracks would become fan favorites in Formula 1 for their fun but ultimately safe racing, we first need to find out which tracks would even be allowed onto the calendar. That is right, this isn't a video about fun, this is a video about venue surveying and bureaucracy, baby. Let's to be clear, this video is going to cover the tracks in the latest Mario Kart game, Mario Kart World, for the Switch 2. Because if we opened it up to every track in every Mario Kart game, this video would be redundant, as Luigi Circuit from Mario Kart Wii is already used in Formula 1, except for some reason, the Italians renamed it to Monza when they copied the game. This shows that it can be done, and despite the dash panels, jumps, and non-standard building materials used in many Mario Kart circuits, they can still be deemed acceptable according to the FIA. This thing obviously has a lot of words, 41 pages in both French and English to be precise, so probably the easiest way to do this is for me to run you through the key requirements and which tracks meet them, because yes, I have read this entire thing. We can actually boil this down to 24 measurable requirements, and so we can go through, give every track a score, and find out which ones get a passing grade. There's obviously stuff about track length, corner banking, and safety equipment in here, but I think it's also important to mention some of the things which are not mentioned in these regulations, such as road material. I guess the FAA just assumed that every track would be made out of tarmac, but that was a lack of imagination on their part. And so when a circuit in Mario Kart is in fact a rope bridge or a giant mushroom or a cloud, that's all legal. Also, you may be surprised to learn that these regulations do not forbid jumps. There are times when Formula 1 and other racing cars do get off the ground a little bit, so it would be hard to regulate. But once again, I imagine whoever wrote these regulations didn't imagine we would launch a car through space or fire it out of a large cannon, and so they haven't banned them and it's all fair game. In general, I'd have to describe these regulations as surprisingly vague, exactly what you want from safety requirements, but they do have some specific points, so let's take a look. Firstly, there are a few measurements in here, like track length, width, blah blah blah, so we need to know how big the tracks are. I have no idea how big this is. The game doesn't give us any useful track info in the menus, and it's safe to say the scale of things in this game is a little strange at times. I could use Mario's seemingly official height of 5 foot 1 inches and work backwards from that, but I have a feeling that someone's been adding a few inches to make the dating profile look better. Then I remember the game does actually give you in-world measurements, it just gives them to you in the most unhelpful way possible. 
You see, Mario Kart World has unlockable stickers, which you get for a variety of things in the game, including driving certain distances. And the first of these pops up when you cover five kilometers. And so all I had to do was create a new account, launch the game, immediately drive at a constant speed while timing myself until I got this badge, figure out that this car has a cruising speed of 131.3 kph or 81.6 miles per hour if you're from one of these countries. <laughs> then traveling at a constant speed and timing myself along the distance of this barrier, working out that one section of this barrier is 4.8 meters, and therefore that the wheelbase of this cart is 1.13 meters, meaning Mario's height is actually 1 meter 51 or 4 foot 11, you little catfish. So now that I knew how big the carts are and how fast they travel, which is pretty fast by the way, but not unrealistic, we do have carts in real life that do do 80 miles an hour, I could travel around the world of Mario Kart world and measure everything else. Obviously, I wasn't going to do that as Mario, playing Mario Kart as Mario, I'm not a psychopath. I'm not. So I switched over to the best character in the game, Penguin, and the best vehicle, the <clears throat> Lil Dumpy. Now, before you comment, Mr. V, did you know that every character vehicle combination has a different top speed and acceleration depending on their weight class? Yes, obviously I know this. You think I just spent the last week playing Mario Kart World 12 hours a day and didn't come across this information? Obviously, I redid my calculations to get the length and speed of this thing, 132 kph, Mario and Shambles, and therefore I could set out around the Mushroom Kingdom and compile my report, which I will now present to you, members of the FIA circuits committee and presumably anyone else who happened to click on this video. So first up, as I mentioned before, track length. For Formula 1, we want a single lap to be between 3.5 and 7 kilometers. Now obviously most tracks in Mario Kart are too short, but surprisingly we actually have one that's too long, Rainbow Road, at over 11 kilometers to get around this thing once. Between these extremes however, we do have four circuits which do meet this criteria, which just so happen to be the four other circuits where you do one big lap instead of three small ones in a Grand Prix. Mario Circuit, Peach Beach, DK Stadium and Crown City. If you've played the game, you probably won't be surprised to hear that the shortest circuit is Cooper Trooper Beach at just 840 meters per lap, which is just a little bit shorter than the distance between my eyebrows and my hairline. Criteria 2 width. The track has to be at least 12 meters wide at all points, which for reference is almost exactly the width of this bridge on Whistle Stop Summit. This hilltop on Moomoo Meadows, this jump at Boo Cinema, this horrible claustrophobic corridor thing on DK Spaceport, who put this here, all fail this requirement. But actually, 20 out of the 30 tracks get a pass here. We then have a requirement that the width of the track can't change more than one meter every 20 meters of length. Basically, we can't blast through a doorway, because if you make me do that, I will hit the doorway. What you say? There's then a specific requirement that the starting grid has to be 15 meters wide to give space for starting shenanigans or presumably someone exploding because they press the throttle too early. Every single track meets this requirement except one. Dino Dino Jungle, but to be honest, that is the least of our concerns around here. Speaking of the starting grid, it can't be on a slope of more than 2% gradient, and so Acorn Heights, Cheap Cheap Falls, and Great huh? Block Ruins all fail on this one. Then the grid positions have to be spaced 8 meters apart for Formula 1, which every single track fails, but this is just some paint on the floor so we can let this one slide. Going back to corner banking, we can't have a gradient of more than 10%, which is roughly this for reference, and so this skate park quarter pipe, which forms part of the circuit, in Crown City for some reason is going to have to be a fail. Still cool as hell though. And then we get to Banking's much less cool younger brother, Transversal Incline, also known as how tilty the track is from side to side on a straight section. This regulation is specifically in here to help with drainage, and it says the track has to be between 1.5 and 3% tilted to help the water flow off. But I think we can use that 3% as a kind of benchmark for sensible track design, because otherwise we're going to end up running Formula 1 cars down I don't know, a snowboard half pipe, which once again is cool as hell, but not exactly safe. Speaking of drainage, the track must have it. And while some tracks have literal drains, very cool Bowser's Castle. I'm gonna say that even if I can't see one, any venue that doesn't have water on the circuit is gonna get a pass. There are some 
notable failures for this one. Then there's a couple more requirements regarding distances, mainly that the track has to have at least 250 meters between the start line and the first corner, which some tracks do manage, and that you can't have a straight longer than two kilometers. In lots of places, the entire circuit is less than this, so there's no concern there. But I did have to take a look at this main road through the middle of Crown City. It turns out it's only 1.1 kilometers long, so it's okay in that regard. But you may be surprised to learn that it's not okay to have active traffic on the road in the middle of the race. Section 2.1.4 states that you must ensure that all ways onto and off your track are closed. If there's traffic on your track, it's not closed. If someone is riding a jet ski around your track, it's not closed. And also see my previous point about drainage. Must be the water. Even in cases where there's no traffic, if I found enormous holes in the barriers that you could drive through, or, you know, a truck halfway onto the circuit, I've marked it down as a fail. And then one other point from this section. The track must be free from obstacles. Now, the FAA does not give examples of what is and isn't an obstacle, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it includes boxes, flaming barrels, various flotsam, an active market, a moving train, geysers, lava geysers, giant barrels, giant robotic apes throwing said barrels, moles in a sewer system, toads in a gondola, and of course, reanimated dinosaurs, to name a few. Most of the circuits in Mario Kart World have some kind of random shenanigans for drivers to crash into, but I'm pleased to announce that seven of them are managed correctly and are free from obstacles, meaning races are safe to continue. Well, I say safe, that's relative. A couple more quickfire regulations. All runoff areas must be free from vegetation. Pretty simple in most cases, except are chocolate chips vegetation? That's not a rhetorical question. I genuinely don't know. Please tell me. The track must be in good condition, and so no holes in bridges, ship warfare related damage, and also I'm going to fail Mario Bros. circuit on this one because there's some minor cracks in the tarmac, equally as bad as those other things. We have some regulations regarding advertising around the circuit, mostly that it should be stable and secure. A good example of this would be this sign at DK Pass, or perhaps these holograms. And a bad example would be a banner supported between two live elephants. Like guys, seriously. The only thing less stable and secure than this would be, I don't know, a guerrilla marketing campaign by a train operator where they pilot a flying train around the circuit. Perhaps I was too harsh on the elephants. Also, you are allowed to have advertisements in the runoff areas, as long as it's painted on the floor or there's signs which are lightweight and breakable, much like we see in actual Formula One. Now, most circuits in the game have these advertising boards all around the place, so I did a little test to find out if they are, in fact, lightweight and breakable. It's going to be a fail. All tracks must have a solid white line painted around the entire perimeter, and while none of the tracks did this correctly, I'm going to give a pass to the three tracks which came close. Mario Circuit, Peach Stadium, dedicated racing facilities, and so not much for a surprise, and also Moo Moo Meadows, if you ignore this part. Then we have just two more regulations regarding the actual racing route. Firstly, you're not meant to have a change in gradient, i.e. a ramp, during braking, cornering, or heavy acceleration which is a pretty easy one to get right as long as you don't do something irresponsible like, I don't know, putting a dash panel on a ramp to intentionally launch someone into the... Yep, so that's half of them failing this one. And then finally, the racing track must have appropriate runoff and or barriers to prevent injuries and crashes and to prevent the cars getting out into the audience. This regulation basically says that this runoff has to be grass, extra tarmac or appropriate aggregate. Now, the intention was that appropriate aggregate means gravel, but they didn't explicitly say this, and so is sand appropriate? Is lava appropriate? Is chocolate sauce appropriate? I'm going to say yes to all of the above. But despite that, every single circuit fails on this point because they all either have massive gaps in the barriers like are you even trying Dino Dino Jungle or they have sections where you can fall off a cliff or into the cold abyss of space, both of which I would describe as suboptimal. And so we then just have two more regulations regarding facilities. Firstly, the track must have pit lane. Now this one sounds simple, but every circuit except one has failed. Thank you to Mario Brothers Circuit for being someone other than me to actually do their research. It also states the pit lane is not allowed any guests. I'm going to be generous and say that all of these people are team mechanics, and it says the pit lane has to be 12 meters wide and long enough for 20 garages. Yeah. 
And then finally, a piece of good news. The final regulation in this book is regarding disabled access to viewing areas, and I'm pleased to announce that every single track has passed. Almost every track has some kind of general admission area which is currently filled with spectators, including the two floating tracks of Great Huh <laughs> Block Ruins and Rainbow Road. And then even though everyone currently spectating at Boo Cinema is flying, you can definitely get a wheelchair or other mobility device into this area by the start finish line. It's not safe to go there as you're only protected by these admittedly quite heavy adverts, but the regulation never said safe, it just said you had to be able to get there. So now that we know all the regulations, we can go around, survey every track, and find out how many points each one got. Before we get to the winners, I can confirm that the least suitable tracks of Formula 1 are Wario's Galleon, or Wario Shipyard, in America, because it's a water race with loads of floating garbage, and there's very little to stop you drifting off into the open ocean. Dino Dino Jungle, because, well, yeah. And then Choco Mountain, because the course is in disrepair, there's some incredibly narrow sections, and, oh yeah, there's people actively playing American football on the course. But now, the top scorers. Unsurprisingly, dedicated sports venues like Wario Stadium or Mario Brothers Circuit did score well, but only as well as Boo Cinema, so take that with a pinch of salt. But with a score of 12, all of them were beaten out by our three winners with a score of 13 out of 24. Mario Circuit, shocker, DK Spaceport, okay, that's an actual shocker, and Moo Moo Meadows. I said it right at the start, guys, and it turns out that, as always, I am never wrong. Moo Meadows is a fantastic circuit because it's easy to learn, hard to master, has cows, and is the most compliant with FIA sporting regulations regarding track design. It did, of course, only get 13 out of 24 or 54%, which would be an F on most tests, but it's the best we're gonna get, and so I'm pleased to announce that the latest addition to the 2026 Formula 1 calendar is the Mushroomian Grand Prix, brought to you by Moo Moo Milk. I hope you enjoyed this video, and maybe give it a like if you did. I know it's not exactly the video that lots of people asked for, but to make up for that, I'll give you all an exclusive 15% discount at mysteriesgarage.com for the next month using the code LILDUMPY. Enjoy!